Hi, I'm Amy Henry on the first season of The Apprentice, and you're watching Sidewalks. Welcome back to Sidewalks. I'm Cindy Rose, and with me, of course, is my ever partner, Richard Arley. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> well, right now it's time for Cindy's favorite segment. It's the part she talks about all the time. Uh, I love it. I love it. It's time for Sidewalks Celebrity Spot. <laughs> My next guest is a woman who knows all about pressure, deadlines, and work-related stress. She took the ultimate professional roller coaster ride and spent every waking moment trying to convince Donald Trump to hire her into one of his companies in one of the season's hottest reality shows, The Apprentice. Please welcome Amy Henry. Please welcome to Sidewalks. Amy, how are you doing? Just fine. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine, thanks. So tell me what made you decide to audition for The Apprentice. You know, I was really just in the right place at the right time. I don't watch much television, and so I hadn't even heard about the show, and one of my friends happened to call me when I was en route from Austin to Dallas and told me they were holding auditions, and I heard about it. I'm like, this is fantastic. Survivor in the big city. So it just seemed <laughs> like a perfect fit. Tell me about the process to audition. What, what exactly happens when you, you would call them up and say, okay, I want to come? Well, they have an open casting call in cities around the U.S., and you go into, um, usually it's a bar or a restaurant, and sit with like 500 other contestants or contestant wannabes, and at one point they bring you into a circle and ask you a question, and it's your opportunity to make a statement. Now, why do you think they chose you for the show out of the hundreds of other candidates? Well, I think uh, they are looking for people. One, you've got to have a solid resume. So that's the first thing is you must be qualified as a viable contender for the job. Um, and then after that, they're looking for people that are outspoken, type A personalities, add a little controversy and, and spice to make good TV. Now, a lot of participants from other reality shows say that the story told is all in the editing. Do you feel the show accurately represented what was really happening? You know, I am always surprised at how accurate each episode is. The actual ratio of footage time to the time that makes it on the air is 300 hours of video for one minute. And it's amazing the talent that Mark Burnett's staff has to create a very accurate show. There was quite a storyline brewing with your good friend and love interest, Nick. You know, I would be in trouble with our male viewers if I didn't ask what the real scoop is here. Are you and Nick dating? No, no dating. Here? We're actually really good friends. We went out a couple times after the show was over. Um, but on the show, it was all business with a little bit of flirting. And afterwards, when we were back in our real lives, I think we realized we were pretty much in different stages, living across the country from each other, and it was best to remain friends. Right. What is the status of your love life now? Are you seeing anybody, anybody special? Um, I am actually dating someone in Austin right now. Oh, I hear the hearts breaking in the Bay Area as we speak. <laughs> Looking back, do you think that the tasks and the tests that you were asked to perform were really good measures of, of how a good businesswoman you are? You know, it's, it's amazing. Some of these tasks you initially start saying, oh my gosh, I'm selling lemonade. Surely there's not a lesson here. But really, every single task, there are lessons to be learned. And, you know, it may be, don't take no for an answer. It may be, think of something different and in a different way to market yourself. But every task, no matter how trivial or silly or creative they are, there's always a, a true business lesson from each show. I firmly believe I learned something from every single task. Did you have a favorite task? My favorite task was... Um, working at the flea market. It was the first time we worked with the guys, so it was a fantastic dynamic to get away from the cattiness and the, the stress of working with the women. And it was also a real creative um, outlet, so we got to make t-shirts that we loved and had a fun time selling them. So Amy, give us some job tips for those people that are out in the world today uh, trying to, to make it. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. You know, I, I wanted to focus on a few of the services that I think have really helped me organize my life and, and find the right job. I always recommend to people that are looking for a job to go to Yahoo Hot Jobs or another web service on the internet to find hundreds of job opportunities in the right industry for you. 
Uh, business is really done on the internet today and coming from a technology background I always think it's important when you're sending critical information to use a security system like McAfee to ensure that you don't have viruses on your computer preventing you from finding that job and also ensuring that hackers aren't busting into your computer sending unwanted information. Not to mention your potential employer getting infected. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's a good way to make an impression. It, absolutely. I also <laughs> make sure that I'm always organized by keeping every ounce of my data on a PDA system and now we've got these fancy tools that you don't even have to type you can just talk to them. Listen to this, it's so cool. I say it's cool. The battery's dead. I can say you call know, Donald television. Trump <laughs> and it actually will dial who I want to talk to. And on top of that, time is of essence, so you want to make sure that you're not spending time those monthly tasks like paying bills. So I like to pay my bills online using a debit card like Visa um, to ensure that my bills are paid on a timely basis. And then once I got my job, I'm always traveling for business. So it's important that I choose a hotel chain consistently like Hilton where I can ensure that when I get to that hotel that they've got somebody taking care of my business travel needs. What was it like to work with Donald Trump? What were your impressions of him? Well, you know, initially I went on the show thinking he was this arrogant yet really smart businessman. And I left thinking that he was an arrogant, smart businessman. But <laughs> he's got a great personality. I mean, he is such a surprisingly likable guy and so smart. I mean, there's, there's just so many lessons to learn from him. And thank goodness. Um, 30 million viewers got to learn lessons from him and, and weren't even you know, as lucky as I've been to meet him. So it's great. He's a smart man. Any chance that the Donald might yet find a place for you somewhere in his organization? We actually have had discussions about uh, me still coming up to work for him in the city, but um, to be determined. I'm working on a book right now, actually. Outstanding. What's the book called? Um, that is uh, the, t the debated topic of the week, actually. <laughs> it's, it's on lessons learned. Um, you know, I, I come from an environment where I've worked with um, predominantly, uh, it's a male-dominated industry. So I think I, one of the reasons I fared well on the show was because of my, kind of the lessons learned I've, um, I've, I've gotten from working with men. And so, you know, it's a, it's a book targeted to women about, these are the lessons you can learn, and here's how you can do it better. So before you actually started on this show, uh, what area of business were you from? Technology. I worked... Uh, um, with a company based out in the Bay Area and, and was part of the dot-com craze. And then I've been working for the past year and a half for a technology firm in Austin, Texas. Now, were you ever concerned that your looks would overshadow your intelligence and talent in business? No, I think that your looks can really only en enhance um, your strength. I mean, it's, it, it, it helps you get in the door sometimes. And, you know, beauty does only go so far. It, you've got to be able to have the brains uh, to close the deal. And, and I think that that's what everyone, I mean, people always ask, you guys use sex too much. And, and really, we didn't. You look at who they cast, and they cast people that you could blame, oh, they're attractive, so they're using their sexuality. But we really all used our brains first. Mm -hmm. What do you think it takes to win on this show? A positive attitude and a strategy of really balancing teamwork with also making sure that you shine as an individual. Any advice for future contestants who want to be on The Apprentice? Uh, don't wear short skirts in the boardroom. <laughs> Can never earn credibility with Carolyn if your skirt's shorter than hers. Amy, thank you so much for being with us today on Sidewalks. It was a real pleasure to have you. Absolutely. Thank you.